Space is at a premium in the shop, and it's high time to ditch these bulky, less practical sharpening solutions. So today I'm going to consolidate all my sharpening tools into their simplest possible form for razor sharp edges on Timber Biscuit. So the first thing I want to address is this blade registration jig. My existing one is super bulky, and I know I can do a lot better. So the first thing I do is head over to the table saw and cut down a piece of Baltic birch plywood. And the reason I'm using Baltic birch rather than just regular plywood is because it has a lot more layers of lamination, which means that it should be void of voids. So here all I'm doing is just roughing out a small block. And then I'm going to take that block over to my CNC and attach it to my waste board, which has seen better days. Then from there I can go ahead and initialize my file for my carve and start trimming out my new block. Now again the goal for this block is to consolidate that registration jig. So what I did was create a couple steps to create my registration stops for my bevel. The cool thing here is that I was able to add a third angle without sacrificing any extra space. So this block will register for 25, 30, and 35 degrees. And I should also clarify that this is specifically designed for the side clamping honing guide by Veritas. But I will test it on an Amazon one later in the video so you can see how it fares. So right off the CNC, this thing's going to require some TLC. So the next step is to bring it back over to the table saw and trim it down to its final dimension. I chose not to carve this out completely at the CNC because that's pretty time consuming. So I figured the table saw was just a more efficient and practical way to go. What I did do on the CNC was just give myself some guidelines to reference against for my cuts, which made trimming the block out super easy. Like they say, when one door opens, another one closes, which is great unless you're a cabinet maker. From there, I just use my chisels to clean up any remaining frayed edges or indentions from the router bit. And as you can see here, this block indexes for the upper and lower portion of the honing guide, hence the U and the L. From there, I could hit everything with some 150 grit, and then this guy was ready to go. And before you even ask, the answer is yes. I did do a limited run of these. So if you'd like to get your own, I'll leave a link down in the description. Now, for this first run, I'm only going to make 40. So if there's more interest in them, I'll restock. But for now, there'll just be a small number of them available. So if you'd like to get your own biscuit block, check out that link below. All right, let's address those abrasives. Now, in the past, you guys have seen me use wet stones as well as lapping sheets to sharpen my tools, but I decided to go ahead and take the dive into diamond plates. And the honest reason is because replacing the lapping sheets every two months just got a little more costly than I expected. And we'll dive more into my reasoning later on in the video. So what you see me doing here is just trimming out a panel of Baltic birch plywood. Now, I've already got all these dimensions and a plan I've created based off Paul Seller's design, so all I did was trim that out. But the one thing to consider with diamond plates is that each one will be uniquely sized. So it's not a good idea to just go off a plan, you really need to measure off your actual plates. Now while all the plates are the same 3 inch width, they are different heights. So even though these are supposed to be 8 inches, one of them is like 7 and 15 16 while another is like 8 and 1 16 So keeping that in mind, what I'm doing here is trimming out a template for my router, which I think is the easiest and simplest way to make this plate holder. Again, the goal here is to make things as easy and simple as possible. All things considered, I don't really like to make things too complex, just like my fear of intricate buildings. I guess you could say I have a complex, complex, complex. So once I had my shortest plate picked from the pile, I could go ahead and build my router template. And to do that, I'll just reference off that shorter block and use some CA glue to assemble my parts. Now I've already cut two pieces to my exact width, so all I'm doing here is getting my exact height. Now here we're going for a snug fit, because no matter what, we're going to have to clean these up with a chisel. That's just the nature of using round things and square holes. I'm sure there's a joke there. But once the glue had set up, I could bring the piece back over to my table saw and use my crosscut sled to trim off that extra tab. And then from there, I can make sure you guys got a great view. There we go. And then mark out the center of my template. Now when working out the center of a template, it's important to wrap the lines all the way around the inside of the template. Otherwise, when you go to line it up, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to nail the position. And then from there, I can take my plate panel and mark out the location for my plates. Now what I'm going for here is a 3 quarter inch border all the way around my plates. And then between the plates, I'll leave a half an inch. So while I wrap that up, let me take a quick second to say that if you're enjoying this video and you find it helpful, please give it a like. It allows the video to spread to more people, and I greatly appreciate your support. Thanks. Alright, so the next step was to set the depth on my router. And for this part, I'm going to be aiming for an eighth of an inch. Then from there, I can just use some double sided tape to attach my template to my workpiece. Just be careful not to use too much double-sided tape with any template that's CA glued because removing it can destroy your template and you definitely don't want to do that. At least, not yet. And there's a little foreshadowing going on there. Alright, so with the template attached, I just use a quarter inch templating bit to route out the mortise. And though I start this process with a palm router, after I cut this first mortise, I'm going to switch out for a router with dust collection because the palm router was making an absolute mess. 
Either way, it's always a good idea to wear a respirator when routing, so you get a little less of that man glitter in your lungs. So with that first mortise cut, I just follow that same process for the remaining two. Now when clearing out the material for a mortise, it's always best to work counterclockwise so that the bit pulls itself into the work. And then from there, we could detach and destroy that template. Consider the prophecy fulfilled. The next step was to cut off these little rubber feet that come on the bottom of the plates. And to do that, I'll just use a razor knife. From there, I'll just use a marking knife to mark out the top of my plates and then a chisel to clean those up. Now I decided to make the adjustments for the plates at the top of the plate holder, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't do them at the bottom. I would just try to keep them all to one edge so that one side of your plate holder is clean. And for me, I like to do it on the bottom since that's the one I'll see. Now this next step is an optional one, but I did go in and use my router plane to clean up the bottom of all my mortises. This way it gives me a consistent depth and everything's nice and smooth for those plates to reference against. From there I can do exactly like I do when I try new dad jokes on my family and try it for size. Ooh, that was a good one. And if you like impeccable puns like that one, and of course woodworking, make sure you subscribe. I make new videos about woodworking tips, tricks, and projects all the time, so subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And with those last rounded corners cleaned up, I could pop in my plate. So once I had a nice snug fit on all my plates, I could head over to the router table to set up my bit and cut in a groove. Now, as we've talked about many times on the channel, three quarter inch plywood is not three quarters of an inch. So this bit is specifically designed for 23 30 seconds or 18 millimeter thick plywood like we have here. And if you guys have been looking for plywood bits, I'll leave a link to this one down in the description. It comes in a combo pack of a quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch. So three birds, one stone. Or I guess technically that's three birds, three stones, but I think you get the idea. From there, I can head over to the table saw to cut out my piece that's gonna create my clamping strip for the bottom of the plate holder. And don't worry, that'll make more sense here in a second. Brick. So here I'm ripping down that strip to one inch. Once glued up, this will leave me a strip three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch exposed, which is plenty for me to clamp onto. From there, I can head back over to the bench and sand down my plate holder, my strip, and one extra offcut that I'll use to create my strop. And that doesn't need to be any exact dimension, I just use an offcut from the plate holder. Then from there, we can glue our clamping strip into our groove. And to do that, I'll just use some quick and thick. This will really shorten the dry time and allow me to move on to the next step more quickly in the shop. I don't use this type of glue for everything, but for small projects like this, it really comes in handy. So with the glue set up, I could go ahead and apply a quick finish to all my parts. This will help protect the parts a little bit, but honestly, we're working with sharp tools and liquids, so it'll probably see some wear and tear. While the finish dried, I moved on to assembling my strop. And to do that, I'm just gonna take this piece of leather that I got off Amazon and trim it down. Now I've had really good results with the suede side down and raw side up for sharpening my tools, but let me know what your experience is down in the comments. Do you use the raw side or the suede side up? If it's raw, comment raw. If it's suede, comment suede. And as always, if you start your comment with raw or suede, I'll reply to you first because I know you're paying attention. From there, I'll apply a little rubber cement to the backside of both pieces, wait about 15 or 20 minutes, and then attach the two together. From there, the next step was to attach my plates to my plate holder. Now, while you could opt to using some sort of adhesive here, I'm going to omit that for my project. And the reason is because the fit is super tight. And if I ever do want to get them out, I can just flip it over and use a rubber mallet to tap them out. So now that the sharpening kit is complete, let's put it to work. So I'll first use the top portion of my block to set the initial 25 degree primary bevel. I really like how this allows me to register the blade as well as check the honing guide for square all in one step. Then from there, we can head over to the diamond plates. And I'll first start with my medium to coarse diamond plate, which is about 400 grit. So once I've applied some auto glass cleaner to the plates, I just take about 20 strokes on each, working my way from the medium to the fine and then finishing with the super fine. Now I'm not gonna go into all the fine details about what types of diamond plates you should get, but make sure you're buying a quality diamond plate. And the quality diamond plates use what's called monocrystalline diamonds, which is gonna ensure that your diamond plates last a hell of a long time. So with my primary bevel done, I could set my secondary bevel to 30 degrees. And for this secondary bevel, I only do about 10 to 15 passes on my highest grits. And that's the 600, which is fine, and the 1200, which is the super fine. And then from there, I'll use the edge to pivot the blade onto the stone and remove the burr from the back. Next, it's time to break in that new strop. And the first thing I'll do is to load it up with a hefty amount of charging compound. This is the final abrasive in the sharpening step, and it'll give us a razor sharp edge. So the first thing I do is just take a couple passes over the back to make sure that that burr is completely gone. And then I do about 20 to 30 on the edge. Now you wanna have a decent amount of pressure here, but don't do it so hard that you risk snapping the handle from the socket. And after about 20 to 30 passes, check that out. So now that we've seen what this setup can do with the Veritas honing guide and Veritas chisels, let's check it out with a Narex chisel and an Amazon honing guide. 
So here I'm going through the exact same steps as I did with the Veritas chisel, only this time obviously sped up since we just saw that happen. And from there, we can go ahead and put them to the test. And I'm going to test these out on some hard maple, which is notoriously hard on hand tools. So it shouldn't be a surprise that the Veritas chisel cuts through it like it's not even there. But for what it's worth, the Narex chisel did just as well. Now it should be noted that the Amazon honing guide probably didn't cut those bevels at exactly 25 or 30 degrees. Either way, as you can see, it gets the job done really well. So just keep that in mind if you are using a different brand. Since I had everything already set up, I went ahead and sharpened a couple of my plain irons as well. I keep my plain irons pretty sharp, so these are really just touch-ups at this point, but using this system makes it a pretty quick and effortless process. And I kept that in mind when designing the block so that it should fit the majority of plain irons. And when comparing the diamond stones to lapping sheets, there's no contest. The diamond stones are 10 times faster. And more importantly, just as sharp. So again, if you guys want one of these, what I'm going to call biscuit blocks, check out the link in the description. And it wouldn't be much of a test if I didn't show off some of those final results. Look at those thin, wispy cuts. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty sharp. So if you enjoyed this one, check out this video over here next. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And like always, I knew this would work, and I'll see you next time.